Hey, welcome to Lecture Online, and now we're going to take a look at parametric equations in polar form. So first of all, we come up with something we're familiar with, r is equal to theta. So we should know by now that that gives us kind of like a spiral. As theta gets bigger, r gets bigger, and so slowly we move outward as we move around the circle. Now, this is of course just a graph and has nothing to do with any time involvement. So if we now express x, the position x and the position y on this graph in terms of r and theta, we would then have this relationship x would be r times the cosine of theta and y would be equal to r times the sine of theta. And since in this case r and theta are equal to each other, we could say that means that x is equal to r times the cosine of r and y is equal to r times the sine of r. Or we can write that x is equal to theta times the cosine of theta, or of course y equals theta times the sine of theta. Now if we let uh, the r, the position r, be a function of time, for example, if we let r equals time or time equals r, let's say that, that, that it represents a particle and that particle will be at a certain position at a certain time and that that's related to r. We can make it any kind of relationship, but just for this sake of argument, let t equals r. That means that we can now write x is equal to t times the cosine of t and y equals t times the sine of t. And so now we have two parametric equations, both for x and y, that will now give us the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate in terms of time. First of all, it will also give us this uh, what we call spiral path, but in this case it will tell us where the particle will be at at a certain amount of time. For example, if t is equal to zero, so we can have t, we can have x, we can have y. So let's say that t is equal to zero. If t is equal to zero, then of course x is equal to zero. And y is equal to zero, that means it starts over here at the beginning, at the origin when time, time is equal to zero. Now let's say that t is equal to pi divided by two. Well, if it's pi divided by 2, then x will be pi divided by 2 times cosine of pi over 2. That, of course, would be 0. And, of course, that would then be 0. Well, maybe I could just go ahead and replace it by 0. So this would be 0. And if t is equal to pi divided by 2, sine of pi divided by 2 is 1. So that would be pi divided by 2. So after this much time has elapsed, the particle will now be at 0 for x. And it would be right here at pi over 2 for y. And as you can see, as time goes by, the particle will simply be continuing along its path around there, give it a particular time for t, and it'll give you a particular position for the particle. And so that's how we can convert what we normally would call a polar equation into two parametric equations that now will give you the position of that particle as a function of time. And that is how it's done.